I'm actually a very shy person, believe it or not. Now I'm only kidding. So guys, I've been doing short stuff since 2005. <clears throat> and four years ago, uh, a lot of people don't know this about me, I had a very uh, devastating moment in, in, a moment in my life. Uh, my father, my best friend, uh, he was my rock, he passed away. And um, a lot of things changed. And I wanted to be able to help people on a national level because there's so many people in this industry that are putting profit before people. And I've run my whole business since 2005 putting people before profit. Now what's that mean? That means that I like to help people that are in trouble with their property. Some people don't like my tactics. My tactics are very easy. I want somebody to avoid foreclosure and you're either with me or against me. If you're against me, we'll never do business. If we do a deal together and I feel like that's who you are, we'll never do another deal again. I think you choose the people that I do business with because I can. Most people have to take every client on. I am not a millionaire, although one day I will be a millionaire. Um, my philosophy is, is that I love what I do. I don't look at it as a job. I look at it as something that I'm very passionate about. And you're gonna hear about it. I actually do, I have two small videos, one of my boot camp, and then one of my actual master class, so you guys get an understanding of, you know, uh, a little bit of taste of who I am and why I do what I do. Thank you very much. At the end of the day, <clears throat> most people do not want to go against short sales. And the reason why they don't want to go against short sales is because they feel the process is too long. Has anybody ever attempted to try to do a short sale? Show of hands. All right, cool. Um, how long uh, has anybody gotten a short sale done in 30 days? Has anybody got a short sale approval letter in one week? Has anybody got a short sale done in one month, two months, three months, four months, five months, six, seven, eight, nine, two years? So at the end of the day, if I could show you a better way, uh, a more, uh, how do I say, uh, an easier way for the homeowner, which today, it, today's really basically me explaining who I am, and I touch a little bit on the process, but I talk about why there is an next way. And there is an next way, and I tell you this, because in 2005, when I got involved in short sales, people were like, what's a short sale? You know? Um, so, or it was called a short payback in that. My philosophy is, is that if you can try to help people, and I'm gonna say that a lot during the process, so people understand, um, if you can help somebody get out of the situation that they're in, or if you can prolong the process where the person doesn't lose their property, right? You're gonna get an ally, you're gonna get a friend. You're gonna be your walking, talking, billboard, your advertisement. I went to a couple of years ago, I never really advertised on, on Facebook or social media. I never had to do it. I love what I do. And if there's anybody in the room next door, they'll probably tell you at one point or another, they actually took my short sale class, which was back in 2007. So, most people that are realtors, anybody a realtor in the room, raise your hand. All right, cool. So is anybody a uh, full-time agent in the room? Raise your hand. Okay, anybody a part-time agent? Okay, put your hand down. Because nobody wants to work with a part-time realtor. So if you say you're a part-time realtor and you think like a part-time realtor, guess what? You're gonna attract a part-time buyer. It's a reality. So what I try to say to people is, and what's super important, is that <clears throat> you're a plastic surgeon. Go, oh, part-time? <laughs> no, right? Because nobody wants to deal with a part-time part -time plastic surgeon. Nobody wants to deal with a part-time agent. So I don't care what type of business you're in. You get a full-time job, you have a nine to five, and that's cool. Some people like it. My brother went to college, did the normal route, went to Rutgers University, graduated like everybody else in five years. 
<laughs> That's supposed to be four, but it's five. Um, and he has a nine to five job, and he's bounced around multiple times. I'm not ashamed to say this isn't me bragging. Um, last year, I probably made four and a half times the amount of money my brother made in one year. Me, when I went to school, I just thought D was the diploma. And I was out. Yeah, so I like to joke around and have a good time. That's my personality. I like to help others. I wear my heart on my sleeve. It's not a joke. So for people that are realtors in the room, you're an entrepreneur. I don't care who you are. You're an entrepreneur. You're a realtor, you're an entrepreneur. Most people that are realtors are like, ah, I'm doing it because I'm just trying to make a couple extra bucks. You're an entrepreneur. So you want to be bold, you want to stand out, all right? But don't let others bring you down. You want to think outside the box. Me personally, I get excited when I fail. Not all short sales are successful to the magnitude that I'd like them to be. Meaning, I've got a transaction right now. Does anybody know Ultapan, New Jersey? Okay, cool. So Ultapan. So the bank wanted $715,000 for the property. All right. So we, there was a buyer, buyer wanted to buy the property. The buyer said, okay, well, you know, we'll try to find the property. Why are you talking to me to speak with real estate agent? Well, my agent says to speak to you about it because you'd be able to direct me back. That's correct. You see, I don't have a real estate license. I understand what the banks don't want you to buy. Long story short, $750,000. Buyer said, fine, buy the property, $550,000. Big difference. Needless to say, they're excited, they want to work with us on other transactions. This is actually an investor. And most people that are purchasing short sales are panicked because they're like, well, what's the flipping cause? Do I have to wait a certain period of time? You know, certain banks don't have those. But well, you would think after 14 years, I should know which bank has the clauses and which don't, right? So if I can streamline the process and do 93% of the work on a short sale, would you guys want to do the work yourselves, or would you want to bring the transaction to me? Oh, by the way, as a realtor, you keep 100% of your real estate commission. I don't make any money. The buyer pays for our services, all right? So, <clears throat> your failures will win you on success. It's a true story, you know? You don't want to take no for an answer. Me, personally, it's not a known to get a restraining one. <laughs> <laughs> That's how I run my business. That's how I run my daily life. That's how I am when I go into school meetings and speak to the principal and other um, teachers. <coughs> my wife asks me to have to stay in the car because the, the school system failed me. Okay? I was a product of the time when I went to school. So I'm 48 years old, so you can imagine, I was going to school back then. They call me stupid, they call me slow, they call me lazy, they call me everything. Matter of fact, I took a test and they said all I ever be was a warehouse worker, which is okay. Some people like to do that type of stuff. I like to drive around in a forklift, all that. That's pretty cool. But I always knew that I was different. I always knew that I would think outside the box. And back then, let's face it, being an entrepreneur is dirty work. Being an entrepreneur, dirty work. Let's face it. Not so much. So I like what I'm doing. That's the simple philosophy behind what we're doing. Who are we? We're offering solutions and limitations. Like legit. So if you have a scenario and you're not sure whether or not somebody can purchase a property, uh, whether they can stay in their house, whether they need to understand their rights, this is just a better way, or, well, better way of thinking to help people find out what their options are. Because somebody, not, they may not be ready to sell a property right now, but they might be ready three months, six months, a year, right? So who's an investor in the room? Raise your hand. You guys know what i So let's say you have somebody who's saying, hey, they don't want to sell their house. They're looking for options. From now on, when you do your marketing material, flat out, I buy houses cash, or are you looking to know your options? Are you looking to find options? Or send the letter, are you looking for options? Guess what? Your phone's gonna ring. And if it doesn't, go knock on their front door. 
And if they greet you with a fire extinguisher, be like, it's not my first rodeo. You got the pin and you're not going to shoot me with it. Well, it's a chapter that it was. I know. Right? So we're providing real estate solutions nationwide. Guys, as I said, I did go nationwide. I've done it four years ago. When my father passed away, not only did my dad die, but my father-in-law also died the same day. Right? Scary. So one died in Maine, one died in New Jersey. Totally unrelated things. That is, there's a running joke in my house. As my father is passing my father-in-law, my dad's going up. And my father-in-law's going down. I don't know. But that is, a, that is a running joke in my house. So the services that we provide, we're doing 93% of the work. So again, raise your hand, you're an investor. Raise your hand. So guys, if you're going into a short sale, and my company does 93% of the work, is that cool? Matt, what's the catch? Good question. So the, the catch is, is that we get paid for our services. How much? Write it down. Super simple. It's work smarter, not harder. So when you guys are working on a transaction, note in there that it's going to be 3% of the purchase price, a minimum of $10,000. Matt, that's a lot of money, $10,000. I'm doing 93% of the work, and I know what it's like to take a short sale from nowhere to getting into the end game and helping a homeowner move on to the next phase of their life. I met with many people today, and they all said the same thing to me. Because they go, like, oh, right, so you do boot camp. Oh, are you interested? Are you interested in education? No, not me. I'm not interested in any more education. Oh, why is that? I've already done about 30, 40,000, 31,000 dollars in education. That's great. Did they talk about short sales? Well, they touched on it. Have you been in any short sales lately? Uh, it's funny you should mention that. Over the last year or so, I had four that it didn't work out. Oh, that stinks. Any idea what the dollar amount was? Did you think you might have lost? Yeah, I know the dollar amount. 20? No. 30? No. 90? Eh. 115,000? Yeah. Is education important? Yes. Even if you don't want to understand the process fully, you really should get an idea of how to speak properly to the homeowners, right? Because let's face it, on a short sale, if you're not going to get through the homeowner, you're not going to get a transaction done. It's just not going to happen. So this is a video I want to play for you guys. And hopefully we can scroll down to it. Maybe all the way to the bottom on the left. Wait, 
So guys, the next stop, so I, in January, we had our first ever short sale boot camp expo. I was so, I'm just chills. I was so excited to be able to actually turn around by myself. And we had 207 attendees to my first ever short sale boot camp. So to me, I was super excited that I could offer that type of service. And <clears throat> here's where I learned. Not a lot of people know a lot about short sales. That's number one. Now, and I don't say that last in the joke, I say it's kind of scary because after 14 years of being in the industry, there's a lot of people that retire from real estate. There's a lot of new people that are coming into real estate. There are people that are getting a real estate license. And here's one of the things that really scares the hell out of me, is that a lot of real estate companies, brokers, are one of the biggest offenders. Any real estate brokers in the room? Oh, you get down and get everything. Okay. <laughs> they don't show or they don't explain the process to the short sales, right? To their agents. So when I speak with an agent, my agent's like, hey, you know what? I'd love for you to come in and speak with my broker and try to get it so my broker can have you come in and like maybe educate us so we understand what a short sale is. And then I speak with the broker. You know what the broker says? Not interested. You know what I do? You know what I go back and I tell the agent? The broker says, no. You might, want, you might as well move out to another agency. Because he's not willing to educate you. He doesn't, he's not looking to spend money to educate you so you can be a better realtor. So you can help homeowners understand their options. And because of that, that's upsetting to me. So I try to make it so people understand what their options are. And I say that all the time. Are we going to the next slide yet? Or no? Shut off. I know no more over here. So basically, what I do is I try to make it easy so everybody understands what their options are. Now, I keep saying the word options. So unfortunately, what's going to happen now, just like 2005 when I got involved in the industry, People said, man, no idea what short sale is. I have no idea who you are. You're a little crazy. You need to leave my office. So I was with an education group and we were educating people on short sales and showing them how to do it. Now what I learned along the way was, there is two types of short sales. There's an investor short sale, and then there's a retail short sale. And the difference is plain as day, just like I'm saying. An investor wants to buy a property, they're looking to make a tremendous amount of money. If it's somebody who's not, and it's a regular buyer, they want to pay retail for it. So do I get properties from asset managers? Yes, I do. Do I profit from them? Yes, I do. Has there been a scenario where the homeowner had to get some type of movie expense so they can move on to the next phase of their life? 100%. So, what's the benefit of working with my company? Well, unfortunately, the following people really don't understand how the process works. And this isn't me calling anybody out, this is just me stating the facts. Realtors, attorneys, paralegals, investors, mortgage reps, or money people, and there's also other short sale companies. There are people in that next room that I've actually gotten transactions from because their agent couldn't get it done. And what wins in the game is understanding the guidelines. And when you understand the banking guidelines, you're gonna win. When you know how to file a complaint against the bank, you're gonna have a win. When you know how to file a qualified written response to a bank, you're gonna win. At the end of the day, it's about the homeowner. It's about putting them and a better situation. The truth is, any of these people that are on this list, it's not their fault. Because the banks are not going to show you how to successfully complete a short sale. All they have to do, legit, is process paperwork. And if they process the paperwork, 
They're not out of compliance. Scary, right? What about the person who's in the house that may or may not have a foreclosure on their record? They don't care. Oh my, I'm sorry. My process, my, my lead, my lead, my lead negotiator used to work for a big bank. She left her position in her company, very high up, to come with me on my quest to help people on a national level. That's pretty powerful. To leave a cushy job at a bank to come work with this one. I've been called the Long Ranger and I've been called Robin Hood. You know, they say, just don't call me late for them. At the end of the day, it's about doing the right thing. So please, you gotta understand the process and how the process works. So this is an agent. Melissa used to be on Remax. She's actually with EXP Realty now. Melissa's been doing short sales for over 10 years. Now, if you don't believe me, you can take a picture of this name and you can actually, uh, you can Google her, you can reach out to her and say, look, Matt posted something at an event saying that you made $55,000. She made $55,000 off of two transactions with me. That's a lot of money, guys, right? One of them was a retail buyer, and one of the people was an investor, all right? So understand, there really is a difference of it. Come on to the next wave if you're an investor, you gotta to wanna to understand how this works. As a realtor, you gotta understand how this works. This is Christopher Chin, he's with Keller Williams, and Chris is somebody that I do business with. Chris, just tell me really quick, super fast, on what happened, how we met. How's it going, how's it going, everyone? <laughs> So I had a property in Roselle where the title came back completely messed up after a couple of um, after a couple of runarounds. Um, the owner actually owed, owed about two hundred and fifty thousand on the property. I claimed that she owed one hundred and fifty. Um, what happened was the title, the title came back wrong. We ended up sending it up over to the file with Matt Erdogan. Um and after a couple of months, just because the seller itself was really really difficult to work with. He managed to get that two hundred fifty thousand um, dollars that down to one hundred forty three five hundred I think it was, and we managed to close the property within about maybe fourteen days after that, mm -hmm. at best. So when we took the file on, from when we actually took it on the conception, tell the truth. How long did it take to get the transaction done? Um, from from the moment I got the from when I met the property owner itself, it was about fourteen months from when we officially closed the property itself. So, so it's 14 months, but when we got into the mix, how long? Was it? Oh, 10 months. 10 months. 10 months. Why did the process take so long? Uh, I had a seller that decided to run away and decided to hightail it all the way to Willingboro. Oh. Um, if you guys aren't familiar with that, that's about an hour and a half away. As a matter of fact, in order for us to close the deal, we actually had to hire a notary. I actually posted on Facebook that day um, looking for a public notary in that Willingboro section itself. And what happened was he actually drove down to the property at that particular day, got a, uh, got a document signed that had to be overnighted. Um, he accidentally missed one specific doc, but this guy is absolutely incredible. His name is Eric Bulldog, so if you guys are ever looking for an incredible, incredible notary, definitely give him a shout out. He's on Facebook. If you want, follow me on Instagram at Unlock Home because I'll send you all his information. Um, he actually managed to take the doc and went back to Willingboro, and he drove it all the way to Matt Maranel's house that same night which was about three and a half hour drive, I would say. He managed to get there at like 6.30 o'clock, something like that. Yeah, around, yeah. So it was, it was pretty crazy. On the next day, the sellers were this crazy. The sellers were absolutely nightmarish. I ended up having to um, send a car service to the local table. And I can't get Uber. Yeah, I sent them an Uber. Each one of them to the closing table for the side of the documents, and then we had to close the Nice, bro. Thanks. Quick round of applause, right? Now give it up. <laughs> By the way, uh, we're we'll getting ready to launch uh, Uber closings. <laughs> All right, cool. So, 18 to 24 months. Everybody's been asking me all day. 18 to 24 months, that's when the next wave is going to happen. Is the crash going to be as bad as 2008? No. Is it going to be an issue? Yes. 
So 18 to 24 months, the market's gonna change, no question. And you know, people don't realize this. How many people lease a car in Rome? Anybody lease a car? Anybody own a car? Anybody own a car clear and free? That's awesome. Can I borrow it? <laughs> Did you know that right now, one of the highest default rates in the let's say, financial industry right now is lease car payments? Yeah. Yeah. All right, slow Lease car payments. <laughs> and people that are buying cars, right? Right now, I believe there are 97% of people right now. I'm sorry, sorry, sorry. sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just like, sir. So 79, right? So that's scary. But what's that tell you? Crash is coming. People can't afford it. People can't afford it. You can't afford their cars, right? When your car goes away, what happens after that? You can't pay your rent. You can't pay your mortgage, right? So <clears throat> understanding the guidelines is going to make things happen for you, right? Understanding how to file complaints, understanding what the banks are looking for. Has anybody really done a short sale successfully in this room? Raise your hand. That's outstanding. Has anybody done two? 50. I've done about 100. You did 100? <laughs> hey, listen, you don't know. 200, 300? No. All right, cool. It's all good. About showing you guys a difference. Well, here's the dead truth. Most homeowners don't know that they have options at all. Most realtors, attorneys, investors have no idea what options are available for homeowners. All right? Banks do not have to help homeowners qualify. All they have to do is process the paperwork. That's it. So when someone says to me, oh, short sales take too long. I had a gentleman outside, a really nice guy named Michael, and Michael's like, I'm avoiding him like a plague. That's cool. I spoke with the realtor a couple months back, I met him in an attorney's office, and I asked him point blank. I said, quick question for you. There's a, um, oh, it's supposed to be another one. There's another, another video. Yeah, another video. I'm going to play it. I said, uh, are you going after short sales? He said, no. I said, all right, I'm a man. Is some looking for self gratification immediately right away. Cool, understood. So we figured out in the conversation it was begrudgingly on his part. As a realtor, he probably figured that he lost about $39,000 in referrals and probably upwards of $225,000 in real estate commission. And at the end of the conversation, you would have thought he'd be like, hey man, let's team up. You know what he said? Not really interested. I don't care about homeowners. They failed on their mortgage for a reason. And I, not that I want to profit or don't profit from it, it's just not me. I, and I respected that, 100%. I don't respect the fact that he's not willing to help people out and toss some other, to other agents in his office that are doing the short sales or would love to try to do the right thing, right? Scary. You play the video? Short sales thing.
right? I'm not a showboat. People sometimes think that I'm an arrogant person. I'm the nicest person on this planet. I love to help everybody. I want people to find out what their options are. Unfortunately, most people, when they're doing transactions in real estate, everything's about greed. And I don't like that. That's just me. Um, I think moving forward, if you guys have any questions, that's my contact information. I've got my booth outside. I just want to take a really quick picture with everybody sitting in the seats if that's possible. Um, do I have any time for questions? Oh, you're right. I have 10 minutes. Oh, you are. I have 10 minute questions. Well, let's do a real quick question. A uh, real quick one. Actually, you know what? I'm going to do a quick video. So if you guys can just be like, hey. all right. <laughs> No. Hey, did you guys learn? Oh, hold on. Shoot, why are a couple of people behind me? Did you guys learn anything today? Yeah! yeah. yeah. Oh, let's do that again, right? <laughs> hey, did you guys learn? Oh, hold on. A couple people behind me, we're quiet. Hey, did you guys learn anything today? Yeah! Yes. I'll take that as a yes. Alright, cool. Any questions? Yeah. I remember the name, I remember the name. I have a who's me out. for a kind of and we've been doing this for a couple months now, and we just got back information that they're going to on the So basically, I think it's kind of what they did. Uh, yeah, but you want to type it in? Yeah, I mean, it's kind of what I'm saying. Oh, yeah. Okay. That's a really great question. So the question was federal taxing. And somebody actually said that the person's federal putting the property go to auction. Do you guys agree or disagree with that? You agree, right? Wrong. Because we've gotten tax liens to lose off people's properties. So I disagree with that. To me, that's somebody that doesn't want to work hard. I just want to make it, you know, an easy couple bucks. And something like that, it might take a little time to get it removed. You know, so that's good. All right, we'll be talking. I love it. Anybody else got a question? All right, I didn't know there's any supermodels in there. Already chapter 13. Yeah. What would be the next option? Okay. So the question was property somebody followed chapter 13 on a property and the property's be good, gonna potentially maybe go to sheriff's sale uh, or auction or whatever. So if somebody's following 13, and again I'm not a bankruptcy attorney, I don't play one on TV, but I will tell you this, that you can file a 13, and if the 13 doesn't work. You could go to a chapter seven, and that would get the person even more time in the property, and then from there you can actually hopefully get the resolution that you, that you want. Have I ever done something like that successfully? Yes, I have. Any other questions? Hold on a second. Okay, Hi. Uh, for investors, you mentioned you handle ninety-three percent of the work for everybody. For everybody. You mentioned what's the other seven percent of the work. Oh, I like seeing them. Nobody ever asks me what's the extra seven percent. Shut up! <laughs> All right, so the extra seven percent. Listen, at the end of the day, here's the deal. You guys bring us a transaction, and you may or may not know what you don't. Chances <coughs> are, for the suspect, you don't. Because you might have learned from somebody that said, hey, I know how to do a short sale. And then you find out when the property was a short sale, I didn't know how to do it, I never do it successfully. Right? So what we're doing is we're speeding up the process. So when we ask for documentation, we're doing 93% of our work, listen to what we say to do. If you don't listen to what we say we do, guess what's going to happen? The deal's going to fall apart. Right? So when somebody says to me, hey Matt, what's your success rate in getting short sales approved? We're 96% success rate. I don't know too many people out there are doing it. Now, understand, buying a property as an investor, that transaction might not work for you, but as a retail end buyer, you're probably gonna have somebody 
who's going to want to purchase the property, right? So as an investor, if you can't buy that property, don't let the person go to foreclosure. Let somebody else buy it, right? So as far as the 7%, you know, getting the paperwork and that needs to be done. How the fact of the situation. We have investors that bring transactions to us and we have to match them up with real estate agents. But as an investor, you guys do very minimal work. So the investor really does do a lot of work. But the real estate agent or the attorney or the investor, that's where the 7% comes in. So everybody that's an investor is so used to doing everything by themselves, we're taking everything over. And we're updating everybody what's going on. We use a system called Track with Ease, and we're making it easier for everybody to track what's going on with the transaction. Get it? Track with Ease. Oh, so who the hell wants to work harder? Everybody wants to work smarter, right? Does that answer that question? One, one follow-up. Yeah. Uh, you mentioned your fees. What if the, what if the short sale doesn't work for the investor to go retail? Who pays your fee? That's a good question. So, so the question was, So if you'll say if an investor wants to buy the property and the deal doesn't work with them, we put verbiage on the MLS. And the verbiage on the MLS protects everybody involved. A buyer, previous buyer, homeowner, real estate agent, brokers, attorneys, everyone. Why? Because when you disclose it in the remorse section on the MLS, nobody can say that you didn't disclose, right? So in the remarks section, it talks about the short sale, it talks about the short sale process, it talks about what guidelines may or may not apply to that property, and then it says that the buyer is paying a buyer premium of 3% or $10,000, and it's being paid by the buyer. There's nothing illegal about that, because you're disclosing it, right? There's a lot of people in this industry, they don't disclose. And when you don't disclose, that's when you're gonna get your ass sued, right? 2005, I've been doing this. Thank God, knock on wood. I haven't had one lawsuit against me. I didn't become a millionaire, but I did everything the right way. And there's a, there's a huge difference between doing it the right way and doing it the wrong way. So please, if you think it's the fastest way to talk to make $50,000 on a transaction and you know it's not right and you make something versus nothing and you get somebody to buy the property, that's okay. I don't particularly like working with wholesalers because wholesalers don't understand how the banks are relentless. And if you're not going to buy it and there's a sheriff sale date that pops up and we've waited all this time for you to buy the property and you filed all the bankruptcies and all of a sudden at the last second, it's you neither, know, right? Nina pulls out and says, no, nope, not buying the property. That house is going to foreclosure. Never doing another deal with this young lady again. And that's the end of it. And we're going to move forward. And that's going to be it. It really is people for profit. Any other questions? Yeah, right. Come on, Slayer. Let's go, Slayer. Good boy. That's a great question. So I deal with homeowners, I deal with realtors, I deal with investors, hard money lenders, mortgage I deal with everybody.